The Power of Energy. It's the Mojo Show, episode number 21, video edition. <laughs> so if you're watching this on the blog, you will see that we are bringing you into the Mojo studio this week. We're bringing you our very first video podcast. If you're listening to this in audio on your iTunes or your Stitcher app, you'll be able to check out the video for this podcast at mymojoyoga.com slash episode. 21, where we would normally have a blog and the show notes. Uh, this week, we are bringing you, of course, the video podcast. So if you're already here, welcome. We are in the Mojo Studio. You'll see the very familiar black backdrop behind me that I use for uh, many of my videos that I bring you guys. And uh, you see Scott's empty chair behind me. He will be here uh, in front of his microphone very shortly to chat with me and Cassandra Reinhardt, our guest this week. She is our Mojo Ambassador Extraordinaire. She brings us wonderful videos and practices to help us all get our Mojo working on our busy schedules. It's one of the things I really love about practicing with Cassandra. She brings us a very challenging practice in a very short amount of time so we can fit it into our busy morning or into our busy evening. And she also balances that with some really nice relaxing practices as well. She keeps things uh, in a very nice balance. So I really love having Cassandra in the Mojo member space. I feel very blessed to have her there. And I think it's appropriate that she's our first uh, Mojo ambassador to be a guest on the show. So we're going to chat with her about her YouTube channel, her amazing YouTube channel that has almost 10,000 subscribers. Uh, we're going to chat with her about her past to um, becoming a yoga teacher and particularly an online yoga teacher and I'm hoping that we're gonna dig into some of her feelings about social media and uh, being a being a yoga teacher on social media um, and I know Cassandra is gonna have some great nuggets for all of us out there for yoga teachers for yoga practitioners and for all of you who just really like to listen to some mojo all up in your ears so I hope you enjoy this chat that we have coming up with Cassandra. Enjoy the show. Cool. Welcome to the Mojo Show. I am Jean Marie. And I'm Scott Johnson. And that is... Cassandra Reinhardt. Hi, Cassandra. Cassandra Reinhardt. Thanks for joining us today, Cassandra. Um, Cassandra is one of our very favorite teachers on Mojo. I know she's one of my personal favorites, and I'm <laughs> sure she's one of Scott's favorites, too. Constantly kicks my butt in amazing ways. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, Cassandra brings us practices in the uh, vinyasa flow style, the hatha yoga style, um, and, and the yin yoga style. And um, they're always really engaging and, and innovative. And, and personally, I really love them because they fit into a busy lifestyle. You always bring us these, um, you know, nice, nice, compact, challenging practices that, that I can fit into a busy morning. So I, I really appreciate that. And I know um, our members do too. Um, Cassandra's also got a huge YouTube following, uh, which is actually how we found her to be on Mojo. Um, so Cassandra, you know, why don't you give all the Mojo mob a little bit of a background about yourself and how you came to be a yoga teacher and an online yoga teacher? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So I've been practicing yoga for about seven or eight years. And a couple of years into that, I decided that maybe I wanted to give this whole teaching thing a bit of a try. So I went and did my 200 hour teacher training. It just, it happened really well. One of my favorite teachers was offering a training. So I took it as a sign and signed up. So I did all of that and I really felt ready to teach. I felt like right after I graduated, I wanted to get my hands dirty and get right in it. But as most new teachers will probably be able to attest to, no one really wants to hire you <laughs> when you have no experience. So my ambition and charisma kind of didn't work on them. <laughs> so I... I was struggling to try to find a way to teach and trying to run things on my own. Eventually I got a couple of gigs, but it wasn't as much as I wanted to teach. So I thought, you know what? No one's hiring me. I'm going to hire myself. Nice. <laughs> so I decided to just try the online thing. No one really was doing it around me. So I, 
kind of had to start it from scratch, but then my YouTube channel was born. So my channel is Yoga with Cassandra. I've been running it for about a year and a half, almost two years now. It feels like I started it yesterday because it's been going so fast and crazy, but yeah, about a year and a half now. And I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is wow. crazy. It's so awesome. Um, yeah, it is awesome. And I post classes. I generally like to stay in vinyasa flow or yin yoga styles just because those are the ones that I personally like to practice and the ones that I like to teach the most. And I find that the two really complement each other really well and give you a well-rounded uh, practice. But then I'll, I'll also throw in like the odd half a power, sometimes restorative yoga class, just based on what people um, request for me because I like to do people's requests. It makes it a little bit more interactive and fun for me too. So yeah, I'll do it all really. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and now I'm online. Online is where 90% of my business is. I still only teach I only teach three classes a week in person, um, and I would not be able to take on more even if I wanted it because I have everything on my channel. I have about two videos a week that I put there, so it's a lot of, a work. Lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, Scott, you were you were wondering um, what who did you take your teacher training with? Her name is Louise Cameron. Um, okay. I actually just did an interview with her for my YouTube channel. Okay. She's a forest yoga teacher now, um, but when I was training with her, she was a hatha and vinyasa based yoga teacher. So I did it with her, and then I went to Vermont. I think last year or maybe a year and a half ago or so. And I did a um, yoga therapy training with Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy School. So they have three different levels. I did level one. I might go back to do level two eventually, um, but that was really, really good too. Did you get some good takeaways from that? Like what, what changed in your practice after going to that training? So yoga therapy tends to go in two branches. There's one branch that tries to be a little bit more like physiotherapy and really works on rehabilitating um, injuries with yoga. And then there's the other strand of yoga therapy that I studied in, which mimics more using yoga as a form of actual therapy, like psychotherapy. So it's you could be going into a session, their practice usually one-on-ones, and you're um, yeah, using yoga basically as a form of therapy. So it was very different um, because it's not like anything you would ever practice in a big group studio setting. At least it would be very hard to do. And it's a very uh, deep relationship between teacher and students, and it's about meeting the student where they are and working through any kinds of traumas or issues or fears that they might have and ways that they would like to incorporate yoga into their well-being and um, progress and transformation along their journey. So it was kind of a new world for me when I signed up for it. I didn't really know what I was getting into. I just, I come from a background of social work and I studied psychology and linguistics mm -hmm. in uh, university. So I thought that this could be a unique way to kind of blend both of those worlds together. And it really is. However, that being said, I've only done my level one on it. So technically you'd have to do levels two and three in order to be an accredited yoga therapist. So maybe down the line, that's something I want to do right now. I've just been so busy with all the online stuff that I haven't been able to do that one on work, one on one work just yet, but maybe in the future. <laughs> yeah, that certainly seems like a, 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 a completely different arena um, from the online world. Um, because yes. it seems like it, it'd be, it re would require a very one-on-one -on -one interaction. Um, yeah, th that's really interesting. I, you know, your online world has blown up so much. I mean, to hear you say that you've only been doing the YouTube channel for a year and a half, and yeah. you already have almost 10,000 subscribers. That's incredible. What did, what was your strategy? What, what have you done to get that many people on your YouTube channel? Oh, I have perfected the art of the hustle. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Throughout this whole year and a half, I've wanted to quit a dozen times. And it's only now in the last couple of months started to feel really good. And I feel like all the work is finally getting to a place where I'm starting to see results. I'm starting to... Um, get access to more opportunities and really see growth. Um, but it's been a long, hard road. 
I feel like I really had to hustle for every single subscriber and every single view that I got on my channel and I wanted to quit a lot. Growth is a tricky thing, especially on YouTube and it's very easy to get into the world where you start to compare yourself to other channels. Oh yeah. So I would look at these other channels that are two months old and they have triple the amount of views and subscribers and you think to yourself, <laughs> why do I even try? You know why? I, I should just put on a bra and little panties, do yoga. And get my <laughs> it's do so you, frustrating. Sometimes. Do you think that's a top strategy? <laughs> well, it is a top strategy. And sometimes I wish I had more confidence because I could use that strategy, but I don't. <laughs> um, and, you know, people will do whatever they want to do. But it was... It was not an easy road. I really had to um, lean on other people to encourage me to keep going and that it will get easier because it really, it's all about persistence. So you cannot just, and consistency, persistence and consistency. Channels that do well on YouTube, and this is across the board, doesn't matter if you're health, fitness, makeup, whatever, you have to have a schedule and stick to it. So if I'm saying that every single week I'm gonna put up a video, you better put up a video every single week. You two are so like that. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> we we are the same, you and I. And it took me a long time to accept that though, because mm. even though I was already kind of doing a video a week, I was really afraid of setting a schedule around it because I was worried I wouldn't be able to meet it. And my channel would probably be much bigger had I started that sooner. So that's that's a lesson learned on my end. I should have, like now I say, new class every single Thursday. And pretty soon I'm going to up it up to twice a week. I'm just kind of scared to do that because what if I can't meet it? Yeah. But it's, it's the way to go. It's the way to go. People want to know that you will be there week after week to supply them with high quality content. Otherwise, why would they bother? There's just no return on them, for, no return for them. So that was key. <laughs> nice. You said that you really noticed the results in the last few months. What Can you run us down kind of the timeline of the last you know year you started? Obviously, just like everybody with zero. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like after a couple months, what did it look like? After, you know, like six months down the road, kind of give us a rundown so you know, people can get a feel of what it was like to go through that experience. Yeah, so the the first year was very difficult. Progress was very slow and very sporadic. So I would not see any real trends. And sometimes I would get lots of subscribers in one month. And then the next month, nothing would really happen. And that would get very frustrating because I would release a video and it would get, you know, 5,000 views. And I think I'm finally there. I finally found my subscriber view or, you know, my audience. And then the next five videos I would put out would get 100 views. And I, sometimes you just don't know why things work and other things don't work. And that's when it gets really hard to tell yourself, do I really want to keep putting myself through this, putting myself out there and failing publicly, you know? <laughs> Well, it's like, if I fail, everyone will see it. <laughs> Except for the but, reason we fail is because no one sees it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> My friends and family would know. That's true. <laughs> um, but then in the last six months, what's changed is that I've set a schedule for myself. And I really committed to higher quality content. So I invested in myself by purchasing a better microphone, a better camera, um, renting out a nicer studio like I used to film all my classes here and this studio is nice and it serves its purpose but I, I'd rather pay for another studio that has better lighting and so I really just started putting my money where my mouth is and investing in myself and setting a schedule so saying you know I am going to take this seriously and other people started to take me seriously as well and now it's a consistent trend and the nice thing about YouTube and Instagram and other social media platforms where you're trying to build an audience is that there is a little bit of a snowball effect. The bigger you get, the bigger you get. Mm -hmm. So I'm finding my number of views and subscribers are only ever increasing, which is awesome. And that's why it finally feels like I can breathe a little bit, even though I'm working way harder than ever. I can kind of just sit back and trust that progress is happening, whereas before I just I couldn't see it, you know, I was too far behind and I hadn't 
gone through the steps enough to trust that results would happen and now it's it's finally there <laughs> <laughs> yeah now now the stress is on just keeping the schedule going and the content going instead yes. of also being about why is not anyone watching my video <laughs> and growing and expanding and how will i keep being the only one doing all of this and i'm finding that i can't i can't be the filmmaker the content creator the editor the blogger the you know pe person going out and trying to create uh, partnerships and collaborations i can't do it all so at some point it's gonna have to grow beyond me and um yeah, that's the next step that I foresee for myself anyway. Do you have a plan for that in place that you're, you say, in a timeline? No timeline. I would have, but I haven't needed to. So these last few weeks have been pretty crazy for me, and I've had some great opportunities and partnerships grow my way. And for 2016, like, I know we're not there yet, but I already know what my New Year's resolution is for 2016. <laughs> because I want the entire focus to be on collaboration and partnerships. Because I've, I've learned a lot from doing everything on my own, you know, designing my website and doing all my social media management and filming, editing, whatever. I've learned a lot, but I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be the be all end all for my business. It's not sustainable and it's, it's not that fun, <laughs> to be right. honest. And it's also lonely. Like, it's lonely to do everything by yourself. I love working with people and collaborating and exchanging ideas. So I know for me, 2016, that's pretty much the entire focus, is building a team or at least finding some more, um, some other partners who I can work with on a regular basis. Yeah, I know we're, we're definitely doing that in 2016, too. <laughs> I, I've been the one doing 10,000 jobs all, all by myself here on the yoga scene. And so um, it, it's been nice. We're already adding people to the team. Um, so it, it's nice. You know, the, that's the only way that the business can grow. Ultimately, that's yeah. the only way that the scene can grow is if you start to really delegate out certain jobs and, and find really the right people to do the right job. I mean, you know, I, for me personally, I, I love creating content. I love teaching and, and creating videos and blogging and doing the podcast. But I, I don't love, you know, publishing things or or trying to reach out to new people I there are all these things that I don't love you know the administrative side of the business um, doing finances you know there are all these things that that there are so many other people out in the world who are so much better at that than I am yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're definitely learning um, that whole thing uh, at that same time as well so Cassandra you obviously seem to find the value in continuing education and are hardworking intelligent woman with a plan um, we are basing like uh, the internal language of what we're building here off kind of the e-myth revisited what what resources business side of things are you are you using so I what was I using I've kind of been too overwhelmed <laughs> to read more <laughs> lately um, but I did like online was my number one resource when I was just starting off and had no idea what I was doing, like completely nothing, no clue. Um, and YouTube was like my best friend because you have all these amazing professionals who are putting all their information out there for free. So I would watch Marie Forleo. I've watched every single Marie TV YouTube video that's out there and I learned so much from her. And I have like these two mentors. They don't know they're my mentors, but they're my mentors. <laughs> um, I don't know if you know the Luxie Hair channel. No. They do like so Luxie Hair. It's just like a beauty um, hair extension channel. But the woman who runs it and her husband are now like these multi-millionaire entrepreneurs who have just started this business from scratch and. Beautiful. They um, put out a lot of content on how they did it and what you should do. And so I follow, follow them a lot. It's Mimi and Alex Icon. They're great. And then I got into like the four hour work week and Tim Ferriss and some Anthony Robbins, like just the classics, you know, yep. the classics to kind of get out of your own way and figure out what you need to do to um, get yourself on the path that you want to go on. So I did, yeah, so Anthony, Tony Robbins, Tim did Ferriss. You, did you read Tony or did you go to an event? 
No, I've never been to an event. I just kind of read him. And to be honest, like, it wasn't really my thing. Um, he was good in some ways, but he wasn't, like, it didn't, it didn't click right. with me. You know, like, sometimes you click more with others, and then others kind of rolls off your back. Who else did I really enjoy? I did, yeah, the four-hour work week, I thought that was okay. Marie Forleo on YouTube. Alex Icon, Brene Brown, I liked that a lot. Even though she wasn't teaching me about like how to run my own business, um, it was still really important because I had a lot of fear at the beginning of starting my own YouTube channel. Like I've had this idea for years, honestly, to have yeah. my own YouTube channel. And it's only recently that I've had the courage to do it. Um, and it was not that scary, so I don't know what I was so scared about. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that about Brene Brown. She she helps you sort of overcome that the the fear of putting yourself out there and being vulnerable in front of people yeah. who don't know, um, which is a huge obstacle when you're when you're teaching yoga when you're just getting started, especially. Yeah, definitely. I'm reading um, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert now. I'm really loving that. That's a really good one. Nice. Elizabeth Gilbert from Little House Eat, Pray, Love. Eat, Pray, oh, Love. Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> oh, that was, that's <laughs> Melissa Gilbert. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> my friend used to call it Little Moose on the Hill. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think that's. That's that's a nice way to date yourself there, babe. Oh, I, we all know that I'm like 100 years old. <laughs> I am the benefits of doing yoga. I'm older than dirt. I still look this good. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, you know, while we're talking about people that, that you look up to on YouTube, I, you mentioned the, the hair and, and beauty channel, but there was a video you shared somewhere a while ago. I think her name is Angie with the unique makeup thing that she does oh, the tutorials yeah, where so she sticks funny. her eyes like right up in the camera <laughs> she has this crazy hair and we'll yeah, link it on the blog it's hilarious that woman is hilarious <laughs> she's so funny she's like this undiscovered gem on youtube that i think everyone should like follow and it's so funny like what kills me the most about her videos is that she will not film in like widescreen she like, oh yeah just flip your phone <laughs> it drives me nuts <laughs> like big black bars on the side of the, with yeah. the video but this woman does not care she's doing her own thing and like that's inspiring like you have to you know tip your hat to those people who literally do not care mm -hmm. <laughs> and are doing things because they like it and that's just the way they want to do it i love her she's so funny <laughs> she's hilarious i mean she you know people like that who just put themselves out there with absolutely no filter it, yeah. it's astonishing the prancer size yeah. woman is my favorite oh have you seen the prancer size woman no. Oh God, you have to look that up. I'll link that. I'll link that on the blog too. But there's right. this woman who does a whole. She has a whole genre of exercise video called Prancer Size, and she wears like '80s clothes and and literally prances around a park. And that that's the extent of her videos. It's hilarious. And she's got multiple millions of views. Yeah. Like she has a is huge following. She's kind of dated. Um, I don't think she's doing anything currently. In the last couple years, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, she she's a little dated, but we'll link we'll link some of her stuff up on the blog too. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see that. Um, so you know, speaking of social media and, and putting yourself out there, um, you know, you've recently really put yourself out there um, with some of your you know issues that you've run into with with really having a social media scene. Um, and, and I know when I saw your, your, your video rant about that, I was like, right on. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about what sort of led you up to that and explain that a little bit? Yeah. So I went on a little bit of a rant <laughs> <laughs> and this was like a rant I was having internally. And then I was like, Oh wait, maybe this is what I should use YouTube for. <laughs> maybe other people will want to watch this. So I recorded my rant and it's the first time I've ever done that. Um, I, one day I was sitting on my couch watching TV because TV is definitely my guilty pleasure. I just love it. Um, and I reached for my phone for what I think was the 30th time in the last 10 minutes. Okay. So sorry, we had to bring our, our dogs in there. They decided this was the wrestle hour. So we're going to bring them in. Eddie is in the background there. Um, so, oh, wow. Cassandra, you were saying you reached for your phone for the 30th time? <laughs> yes. 
So here I was grabbing my phone for the millionth time in such a short, you know, in like 20 minutes. And I just, it just kind of clicked. And I was like, what am I doing? Like this, this isn't how life is supposed to be. And I got really, um, almost ashamed of how much I grab and look at my phone and check all my social media platforms. And I got kind of sick of it because I just realized like, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person that's in a restaurant with friends and has a phone on the table. I was petting my cat and like looking at my phone at the same time. And I, this is silly, whatever. This is my own little issue. But I felt like my cat is giving me all of her love and attention. <laughs> and like all she wants is cuddles. And I can't even do that. You know, here I am looking at my phone and checking to see if I got another like on Instagram. And then the whole Instagram thing kind of got brought up to the surface along with my rant on my phone because I just realized like, I don't like posing for shots. Mm. You know, you and I are in a very strange kind of situation because our business and what we love to do is online mm -hmm. and it's yoga. Yeah. So you are trying to marry the two and show yourself in these yoga poses and share your yoga practice with others. And I really, really love doing that. But somewhere along the way, it stopped being genuine and authentic. Mm. And it became, okay, well, I haven't posted something on Instagram today. Guess I have to roll out my mat quick, go in a handstand, try to take a picture. Oh my God, it's been 45 minutes. I don't have my freaking picture yet. Yeah. Like, so, and I don't like that. So that is something about my social media accounts that I am fed up with. Yeah. And I have not yet figured out how to make it authentic and genuine because I love sharing beautiful pictures yeah. and I don't think there's anything wrong because I love to look at everyone else's beautiful yoga videos and yoga pictures. It inspires me and motivates me to get on my mat and do it, you know? Um, but I just don't like the re-editing and, you know, taking an hour to take a freaking picture. Like that's not life. That's not right. real life. That's <laughs> not why we got into this business. Exactly. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm struggling with it still. But right now, I have just kind of made the decision where, like, when I get home from work, I check my phone once, and then for the evening, I, I'm not on my phone anymore. Nice. So I, I'm trying to just really make time for myself away and taking the pressure off, you know? Because I was putting pressure on myself of, oh, what if somebody reached out to me and has a question? Oh, what mm -hmm. if someone wants to share something with me and I'm, you know, 30 minutes behind on responding to them? And then I'm thinking, you know what? Like, it's fine. I'm allowed to breathe. And it, I think if I'm able to even live my life away from my phone and away from social media, I should actually have more value to offer on my social media platforms. You know, I don't want to be faking a life to be putting it on Instagram. I want to have a great life that I can show on Instagram, you know, without Definitely. having this. So that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm taking the pressure away from myself of, you know, it's been three days, I think, since I posted on Instagram mm -hmm. and that's okay. I'm not going to obsess about losing my audience because that's the fear, right? The fear is I've worked so hard to get to 10,000 YouTube subscribers. I've worked so hard to have people who actually care about what I do and I want to acknowledge them and connect with them. And through social media, you connect with people by being active on social media. Right. So how do I marry the two? Um, so now it's I'm just kind of being kind to myself. And if I have nothing to say today, well, I have nothing to say today. I'm not going to fake it. And yeah. that's how it is. And I we'll see how it goes. <laughs> to counter to counter argue the two of you guys with how consistent and, and <laughs> diligent and driven you are my balance that I bring to our team is that it's genuine first it's got to be real it's what we're trying to attain acting as if being those people now in front of an audience and that gives the audience the value that they're looking to receive from us and it's challenging because I go weeks where I don't feel like doing anything <laughs> I, I don't think I've posted anything on Instagram for a month 
and and I will and my and I share other thing. My audience, tiny as it is, has not changed. Yeah, it does the same rhythm as this. I'm posting twice a day. Interesting. See, like that makes me sweat a little. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, we I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> like, it's good. Yeah. It makes me sweat to think doing it twice a day. Like I, you know, so we make oh, a nice yeah. little balance, you know. Um, yeah, we, we we're learning from each other. Yeah, Scott, Scott, and I have a constant back and forth about, you know, I'm like, we have to podcast. Today is a podcast day, and he's like, what do you mean? I have these other things I have to do, and and we're constantly negotiating, trying to find that balance between, you know, it, it's just like our yoga postures, right? Like we're trying to find a balance between this sort of strength and and, and a, a flow. Yes. And the sweetness, you know, we're trying to find that balance where it's right in the middle. And what I really um, appreciated about, you know, what you were saying in in your rant about social media was that you were just going to focus on the one that you loved, the one that really gave you joy, which is YouTube. And, you know, for me, out of the social media channels in Instagram, I actually found a channel that I finally really loved um, because I had been on a lot of the other channels for a while and just, you know, not really enjoying what I was doing there, not really resonating with it. And when I when I stumbled into Instagram, finally, I finally found something that married the things that I really love. I love photography. I, I love yoga. And that just so happens to be a great thing on Instagram. Yeah. So for me, I have actually dumped all of my energy into Instagram and I just sort of push everything else automatically out to the other channels using different software but I I really focus my energy in one channel and I've heard that I've heard other people saying that you know for a while I think everyone was trying to say oh you have to be on all the channels yeah but I've actually started to hear it seems like there's a bit of a movement of you know focus on you know dabble in them find the one that you really love find the one that really resonates with your audience where you get some engagement and get some response and focus on that one and forget about the other ones like i don't know how kino does it (laughs) yeah i don't either i think she has a team she has a team she's on facebook (laughs) twitter instagram youtube periscope Periscope, yeah snapchat and i'm like Girl, when are you sleeping? <laughs> like, what's going on here? Because I felt that pressure a lot too. Oh, great. You know, I'm almost like upset that there's a new social media platform. Because, right. great, thank you. As if I needed one more thing to do today. Yeah, as you if know? I needed so a live like, video no. platform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I tried Periscope for a while and it was really cool and really interactive. And I thought, ooh, I'm going to love this. It's like YouTube, but it's live. But then it's like, I don't have time. Like, I don't have time. So I had to reprioritize what do I want most of my energy to be going towards, and that's YouTube. Without a doubt, YouTube is where I want to put most of my attention. Um, so I've been, you know, focusing a lot more on that and putting two or three videos out a week, which is more than I did before, which was one video a week. So I'm kind of giving myself a pass for not being great on all these other platforms. Like, I barely use Twitter. I don't. Like, I don't even really get Twitter, to yeah. be honest. Like, I don't either. <laughs> I understand Instagram, and I understand YouTube, and I get Facebook, but even Facebook, I find, is not the best platform um, for building community or connecting, so no. I'm just I'm doing what feels right and putting everything out to the rest and trying not to compare myself to all these amazing people who are just playing better than me and are just better at doing all these things. Currently. Because I'm not there yet, and that's okay. Yeah, I yeah, I think Scott's right. The you should add modifiers to that sentence. Currently and and yet, <laughs> you know, they, they might seem currently better than you, but I don't I don't know if if that's the be all and end all. And, yeah. and personally, I think you know, almost ten thousand subscribers on YouTube is is rocking it. You know, I personally, I think so. Um, I agree that I started with the modifiers. You're amazing and you do amazing work and you're the, the sky's the limit. The, the only thing that will be your glass ceiling is as high up as you think you you can go because you, you have all of the tools, Cassandra. Um, one of the benefits of being old and an old history major is you get to see like, 
history kind of repeating itself. And when you were describing, when you guys were describing the social media kind of wars and where you want to place your energy, it reminded me of when television went from broadcast network television to cable television. Mm. There was a flurry and a scramble of all these different types of television stations trying to be everything for everybody. And we have the opportunity now to see like which ones are going to really fit the market we, we're in. Twitter doesn't fit what we do. Twitter's no. more of kind of a news source. You know, it may, as you get to a certain level of internet celebrity and again have a team where you have to have some kind of presence where you're making statements, but really it's not our kind of channel. Just like I don't think Periscope is our type of channel. And personally, I haven't heard much more about Periscope since it first kind of started out. I, I think that Periscope actually, it, it, it has the potential to be great for, for yoga. And like Cassandra mentioned, Kino, the Kino McGregor, she's right. actually d- using Periscope daily, I think. She does a daily broadcast, oh it oh. seems. I had to uninstall it because <laughs> there was too much Kino. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a ping every hour that she's on it. And I'm like, when is she having the time to do that? But yeah, like all the big, you know, yogi celebrities are on Snapchat and Periscope. And I don't know. I don't think my life is interesting enough to share the regular day to day stuff. <laughs> I, you know, personally, I when, know. I've, when I've tried to, I, I've done one scope just trying to figure out what Periscope was. And, and I, you know, had thought about doing, you know, a daily Periscope with the last yoga challenge that we did. But honestly, every time that I went to get the app open and think about doing a, a scope, just the thought of it was just like icky to me. I don't know. It was just weird. And I just, I, I yeah. might be a little too private and too much of a hermit to really want to open up my live situation to people like that. I don't know. I just never was able to, I haven't been able yet to get past that barrier of opening myself up live like that. And it seems like something that like Kino, you would need to do almost daily. Do. Yes. So it's like, Like Snapchat and Periscope, if you're going to do it, you better do it consistently. And this is like a commitment that you're making between you and Snapchat and Periscope. And I was like, I'm not ready for that kind of commitment. (laughs) I already have enough commitments in my life. (laughs) So what's the plan for the next six months? So... Like, I can't talk about them just yet, but um, I have a couple new partnerships and exciting opportunities that have that are coming my way that I've worked on. Um, so I'm currently creating my fifth uh, premium online program. So these are paid, um, you know, paid content that I offer online. I have four of those programs right now. And this Sunday and next Sunday, I'll be filming the content for the fifth one, which will be a 50 a 14 day yin and yang yoga challenge. Nice. And that's my first time doing a yoga challenge. So I'm pretty excited for that. And then, um, yeah, the other stuff I can't really talk about just, just yet because yeah. I'm still working them out. But I'm honestly just trying to focus on my YouTube channel and commit to two videos a week, every single week, contribute great content to you guys and a couple of my other partnerships. And, um, Seeing where that goes, trying to collaborate with others. So people might not know this, but I mean, I I have a full time regular day job. This isn't my full time. What is gig. your full time regular day job, and do you have a, a a a timeline? Do you wish to replace that job with this kind of thing, and do you have a timeline for that? That's an interesting question. So I work. I live in Ottawa, and I work for the city of Ottawa. So I'm a municipal worker, and I'm very very fortunate that I get to um, work from home once a week and I have flexible hours so I don't have to be in at nine or eight every morning. Like I can kind of tailor things my way. So that's been very helpful. Um, But my next step now is to go to a four day work week because I am, and that's been discussed with like the people at the city and stuff. And so next year for sure, I'll be moving to a reduced week just because I can't, I can't do five days anymore. I'm doing like full-time yoga stuff and then full-time work. So do you um, have a do you have a, a near to long-term plan to try to 
you know, uh, eventually transition out of that jobby job and get into just doing the yoga full time because you're doing two full time gigs right now? I don't know. I'm when I first started, that was definitely my plan. My plan was in three years, I'm out of the city and I'm in a self-sustaining yoga business that I love. And now a year and a half into it, I'm thinking, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a hard spot, which means I'm actually in the best spot ever where I have a great job that mm. gives me a pension and <laughs> benefits and flexible schedules. And it's going to be terrifying to let that go. Um, that being said, I'll always follow my heart rather than, you know, the comfort and security in a job that's nice, but is not, you know, filling me creatively in any possible way. Yeah. So I think, yes, I'm still kind of envisioning that, you know, in like two years or so, maybe I'll be able to move away completely and do the yoga full time. But that's not where my focus is right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to, because I find whenever I focus on that, I get really stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, I'm just focusing on growing this side business and seeing where it takes me. And if, you know, it does take me um, to full time, then I'll have to make that decision. But I don't know. I'm too scared right now to commit to it. Yeah. <laughs> It's awesome that you have that you have a you know proper jobby job that that gives you flexibility um, so that you can actually do this um, the yoga thing on the side even though it sounds like yeah. you're really doing that full time too. <laughs> but I could be doing so much more. <laughs> I feel like that all the time, and that's all that I do is this yoga stuff. So it never ends. There's always more to do. Um, it's just a matter of prioritizing, I guess, what, what we really, really need to get done. Cassandra, do you have a vision of what your life looks like 10 years from now? Sort of. 10 years from now. So see, we we're keeping it scary with the two and three year mark. But in 10 years, I'd like to think, yes, I am away from the city. And yes, I am doing this yoga thing full time. I think 10 years from now, I am living with a little bit, a lot more freedom than I am right now. And freedom to me does not mean working less because I would not be able to be that kind of person that doesn't work throughout the day. Freedom to me means working on things that I actually want to work on. Yes. So whether that's still my YouTube channel in 10 years and still developing online yoga content remains to be seen. For now, I think yes, it does. But I also want to be able to transition into in-person um, yoga stuff like I've never you know that's for 2016 in my mind but I would like to do my first yoga retreat I've never hosted one before maybe eventually I would like to get into um, teacher trainings although we'll see not sure about that if that's really where I want to go um, and just to have more ability to work from wherever I want it's kind of key for me I like having a home base so I like Ottawa I like having my home and my pets like I'm big on animals, <laughs> so I, you know, we have three pets. I, I want to be able to keep them and maybe open some kind of sanctuary or um, that kind of thing when I'm a little bit more well established. But I just want to be able to have the freedom to say, I'm gonna work from Spain <laughs> next week, <laughs> you know, um, or to have the opportunity to lead retreats internationally and that gives me the opportunity to see the world and do that kind of stuff. I've never been um, too traditional of a person, so I'm not, you know, whereas other people might say in 10 years I'll have a family and that kind of stuff. Like, I don't really think in those terms, so I, I don't know what any of that would look like because I don't, it's not that I don't care, but it's not, it's that's not where my priority is. So that remains to be seen, but I don't know. Your questions are hard. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving terrific answers. I've got another hard one for you, too, coming. It's so, so it's so easy for us to get, like, our bare needs met. Like, your job does that more than adequately. And you yes. do this other stuff to satisfy the creative side of you. 
And I think you kind of answered it with the sanctuary thing, but the main driving force behind getting more than you need is so we can give back, help others, lean into the world and get the, the whole kind of society moving in a direction that we see long term as something that's beneficial for all of us. What is it that drives you in that way that you want to see, like, where would you like to make change in the world? How would you like to give back? Or how are you giving back? I feel like I was brought on this earth to help all the animals that need a home. <laughs> <laughs> I will rescue them all. Um, so for sure, like, I believe that we each have a cause that we're more in tune with. And it doesn't mean that I don't care about people or that I don't care about the environment. It just means that I know that my heart um, is intimately tied to animals and their well-being. So I feel like my energy would be better spent focusing on that, which is why I choose to focus in on that with volunteer or charity or whatever. That kind of work that I would like to do would definitely be that way. However, I do have to say that I am not entirely convinced that people need that kind of a big purpose to live this kind of creative life. I think living a creative life is enough. I don't think you need a bigger purpose. And I think that's why so many people don't go after their big creative dreams because they think it's selfish. Mm. It's too selfish or I'm not saving the world. I'm not curing um, world hunger and I'm not making enough of an impact. Therefore, I shouldn't do it. Mm. I really believe that if everyone just followed their own little passions and did what they wanted to do, we would all together create way bigger change than I ever could if I dedicated all of my efforts into a cause. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Excellent. yes animals and all that good stuff is always in the back of my mind and I know that I do eventually want to get a lot more hands-on with it that's not why I started my YouTube channel and it's not why yoga with Cassandra is a business that stuff would have been done regardless um yeah and I just think we get overwhelmed when we try to uh fix things yeah <laughs> and fix the true. world <laughs> terrific definitely so follow your heart follow your passion and if everybody did that, the world would be a better place. <laughs> yes, absolutely, it would. Yeah. Absolutely, I believe that. I agree. That's awesome. Um, so, you know, speaking of following your passion and following your heart, you, um, you know, we've talked about your YouTube channel a, a number of times and that you're approaching 10,000 subscribers. And I know that you are celebrating that in a very particular way and preparing to give something back to some of your followers. So could you tell us a little bit about your, your celebration? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not at 10,000 followers yet. I, the way I'm estimating it, probably in a couple weeks or a month or so, I'll have hit that mark. And I wanted to do a big giveaway for, you know, the people who have been with me. Some people have been with me from day one and they do my videos all the time, you know. So I really want to kind of give back that way. So I've um, been able to collaborate with a lot of different people. And I'll be posting a video about it soon, giving people instructions on how they can enter the contest for a chance to win. But it's going to be really simple. Just subscribe to my channel and you'll have to leave a comment on that video and then you'll be eligible to win some of the prize. So you guys have graciously offered a prize for this um, contest giveaway. So you guys will be donating a 12 month Mojo Yoga membership, I believe. That's right, a year of Mojo. Exactly, so that's amazing. And then I have a couple of other people um, I got some great jewelry and mala beads and yogi boxes and all that kind of stuff. So I think it, looking at about five prizes so far, um, but yeah, really interesting stuff. So people can just subscribe to my channel and leave a comment once it's up and then I'll be doing the giveaway that way. And it's open internationally, so it doesn't really matter where you are in the world. Awesome. People watch me from all over the world, so I want to be able to um, open it up. That's terrific. And I think, um, you know, by the time this airs, you'll probably have that video ready. So we'll link that up in yeah. the blog. We'll post, we'll, we'll post a Perfect. link to that in our blog too. Perfect. Cool. Are you guys, you have any more questions for Cassandra? I'm going to steal one from Tim Ferriss. What's the first five things you do with your day? Yes. Okay. That's a good one. So although I've been slacking on it the last two days, 
But um, I have, I think you guys have one too, the five minute journal. Yes. Okay. So you guys do know the Luxie hair people. So the five minute journal is created by Alex Icon, oh. who's the founder of Luxie I hair. I didn't know the Luxie hair connection. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, which is why this guy is like such a huge inspiration for me and he's very entrepreneurial driven and has a lot of great resources. Anyway, so I get up, I do my five minute journal, um, so just write what you're grateful for, what you want the day to be like and your affirmation. I'm huge on affirmations and mantras. Um, and now we have a dog now, so we just started fostering a dog, so I've started walking <laughs> my dog every morning, which I'm not thrilled about, but <laughs> it's okay. I'm generally happier when it's done and then I make a smoothie all the time and this is something new that I've started to do and it's made a huge difference because um, I was never big on breakfast I never I'm never hungry in the morning and I always have to like force myself to eat and it makes me grumpy <laughs> so now I just make a smoothie and all of a sudden I'm a lot happier <laughs> nice what do you put so in your smoothie what is your smoothie like Oh, it changes. Okay. It's a lot of stuff. I always put, mm, always a banana. Always put a banana in it. Always put some spinach in it. And then I just mix it up with whatever else I have. Gotcha. Nice. I get kind of weirdly creative and they don't <laughs> always work out. I did a terrible combination the other day. I put, um, <sighs> this is so stupid. I don't know what I was thinking. But I, like, I had peanut butter, and then I threw in a carrot in there. Oh. And, she did not <laughs> and like, as I was putting the carrot, I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> I made a big mistake. It was not good. <laughs> but you got to take creative risks sometimes. <laughs> That's right. You don't you gotta... know where the line is until you cross it. Ugh, line right there. It's not good. <laughs> Okay, so that's that's three things. Yeah. It doesn't have to be um, five. Though. I don't know. I don't do that many stuff that much stuff that's in the morning. It. I'm off to work by then. And that's it. We're <laughs> <It's> done. <perfect. laughs> the morning's done with three things. Sometimes, well, sometimes when I'm driving, I like to listen, and this is super cheesy, but I really like to listen to like this Louise Hay tape. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These affirmations, I she like it. A, she was a neighbor Whenever of mine in Encinitas. She was a neighbor of yours? Yeah. Oh, really? She lived down the road. I never met her, but uh, I we have, in the six degrees of separation, I'm like one person away from Louisa. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Scott has six exciting. degrees of separation to, like, everyone in the world, I think. <laughs> when you're old as Gandalf. It, you know. But I don't think you're as old as you think you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is. I think you're too young to be calling yourself old. <laughs> it's there's certainly a nice smear of sarcasm on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm forty seventeen. I, I'm just seventeen again. Forty seventeen. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, I I think that we've used up enough of your time today, Cassandra. I really really thank you for for joining us um, on the show and for taking some time to chat with us. Um, we really like talking with you. We I had a great time. We've been looking forward to this for a while. <laughs> and I'd yeah, like to thank, thank you and, and show gratitude for your consistent effort, the quality product that you you, you. produce, and your um, collaborating with us on our, on our project as well. Thank you so very much. Okay, well, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for being part of Mojo. We're really thankful for you in, in our community, and I know our mob is, is very appreciative of you and your teachings and what you offer to them as well. Um, so we're looking forward to your next video. Um, I should mention, I didn't even mention it, that this week on the blog we are featuring, um, we're, we're offering a free um, little preview of one of your practices, the quick morning practice that you did a while back. We're offering that up for everybody on the blog this week. Um, and we're also featuring for um, Mojo members the, the yin yoga for relaxation video that you had given to us a while back as well. Um, I think those are really beautiful practices from you and they're really exemplary um, of a lot of the teaching that you do. So um, we're featuring those for everybody this week. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is so fun. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Cassandra.
All right, Mojo Mob, that's it for episode 21 of the Mojo Show. If you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher, be sure to head on over to the show notes at mymojoyoga.com slash episode 21 to check out this amazing video of our chat with Cassandra Reinhardt and to check out the links to enter for your chance to win a year of Mojo membership in Cassandra's great 10,000 subscriber celebration giveaway. So while you're over on the blog, you can also, of course, check out uh, Cassandra's free video of the week, her quick morning practice, which is one of my favorites from Cassandra. It'll help you get the day started on the right foot and have plenty of energy for all of your activities ahead. And I do want to take a moment before we're done to thank our sponsors and give you all a couple of great ways to help support the work that we do for you on the Mojo Show. We bring you this free show every week and we really hope that you'll consider getting some of these great tools to not only build your own Mojo life, but help us keep the show going. So the first is of course the five minute journal. And if you're watching, you'll see that I have my lovely five minute journal here with me. I've got all kinds of, you know, pages filled with stuff you can see uh, on the video that I I write very neatly in my lines, unlike Scott. <laughs> and I'm almost done. I just have a few more pages left in this edition of my five minute journal. I actually need to get a new one as well. And you heard Cassandra say that her five minute journal is also an integral part of her morning and getting it started off right by doing some gratitude exercises and some affirmations. So I hope you'll consider getting a five minute journal for yourself and adding it to your daily routine. You can get your five minute journal at mymojoyoga.com slash five minute journal, or you can click one of the links below. I've got it linked for you right below to get your journal going. Now, the other sponsor that I need to thank, of course, is audible.com and audible is providing you the mojo mob with a really great offer to get a free audio book and a free 30 day trial. We love listening to audio books after we listen to our podcasts, of course. And you heard us talk today about Brene Brown's daring greatly. That's a wonderful book that you can listen to on audible. You also heard us mention the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. We think you'll love both of those audiobooks and you can find them during your free trial over at audibletrial.com slash the mojo show or of course click the link right below. (laughs) So we definitely thank you for joining us for this first video podcast. We welcome your feedback, your questions or your comments. And of course, if you're stoked on the Mojo Show, please take a moment to subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher. And we, of course, love hearing from you. So please leave us a love note in the reviews. If you subscribe to us on iTunes or Stitcher, and if you leave us a review, that just helps make us more visible to other people. So if you really want to help support the show, that is a great way to do it as well. So we thank you for listening to this episode or watching it here on the blog and we'll be back with you with another video podcast next week. Next week, we have Sarah Crawford, one of our other great ambassadors of Mojo with us here in the Mojo studio. So we can't wait for that. Until next time, keep your Mojo working. (laughs) 